In this video I'm going to give you guidance on how to answer an 8 mark question which will appear in paper 3 and assesses your knowledge of the fieldwork skills you used on your trip to Alton on the Nays. As you can see here, this question is asking you to evaluate the accuracy and reliability of the fieldwork methods shown in figure 2. First thing we need to do is make sure we understand what the question wants us to do. Evaluate is the command word here. For an evaluate question, very similar to the way we would approach an assess question, we weigh up the strengths and weaknesses of several options or arguments and decide upon their importance or success. We make an evidence supported judgement. This basically means we're going to use peel technique. Reliability means the extent to which the measurements taken by the student were conducted in a consistent way. Accuracy means the extent to which the measurements taken were closest to the true value, which is affected by the equipment we used. Finally, fieldwork methods are the techniques you use to collect data, just like you did in Walton on your field trip. If we look at figure 2 that the question refers to, we can see that we have a table which shows some of the fieldwork techniques that we used, such as beach gradient and pebble analysis. We can see how this student measured these parameters and we can also see the problems that they noted. If we look carefully at how the data was collected, we can actually see there's quite a few areas where there may have been inaccuracy and therefore unreliable results. And we can also see that the student has identified specifically problems that would cause the data to be less accurate and less reliable. For instance, we can see that when they measured the beach gradient, they used the technique for lining up the clinometer with the eye line of another student. Clearly not as accurate as it could be. The bottom line is that you need to decide which of these methods was the least accurate and therefore gave the least reliable data. Whichever you choose doesn't really matter as long as you follow the following methodology. To answer, evaluate or assess questions, follow this strategy. Start with an introduction defining or identifying the key point of your answer. In this case, referring to the table and identifying that both the beach gradient and pebble analysis done by the student have problems in terms of their accuracy and reliability. Then, use the case study information to structure your answer using either the on the one hand, on the other hand technique, or the most important for slash significant is, the next most significant is, whichever you choose to use, remember to use PEEL here. PEEL stands for point, make two to three developed points for an eight mark question, evidence, include details about specific events, places, or in this case, figure two, which you've been asked to refer to. Explain, give reasoning for each point, using phrases like, this is because. Finally, link. Link back to the question using wording from the question in your answer, using wording such as, this example shows the importance of. Once you've peeled, at the end, come to an evidence supported conclusion, ultimately answering the question, Remember, don't introduce new information in this concluding statement. Let's have a look at my example answer here. As you can see, I've indicated which part of the peel technique is being used at the start of each sentence to signpost it for you. So let's start from the beginning. Study figure 2 in the resource booklet. Evaluate the accuracy and reliability of the fieldwork methods shown in figure 2. So my first point. Of the three fieldwork methods used, the measuring of the beach gradient was the least reliable. So I've gone straight in there with a point. My evidence. According to the student's methodology table, people of various heights were used to record the gradient. Now my further explanation. Using the eye level from person to person to record, the bearing of a slope will have affected the reliability of the measurement recorded and therefore the accuracy of the beach gradient may not be a true reflection of the location studied. Now my link. By simply using ranging poles instead of an eye level from person to person, this would have led to a more accurate profile of the beach and therefore more reliable measurements. 
To my second paragraph, I've combined point and evidence in the first sentence. In addition to this, the student notes that it was windy and therefore difficult to hold the clinometer steady. This would have meant that again, measurements were not necessarily accurate and therefore unreliable. Again, using ranging poles would have allowed the user to hold their clinometer steady against the pole, improving accuracy. Finally, the gradient was measured from the water's edge to the cliff, but as the tide would have been changing, there would have been variation in the length of beach being measured. Therefore, this would not provide consistent measurements. To rectify this, the group measuring each gradient could have split into two groups to measure gradient at different sites simultaneously. Note that as I link back, I'm also suggesting ways to improve the study, which pushes me into the upper tier of the mark scheme. Now I move on to suggest that the pebble analysis wasn't as unreliable as the beach gradient method. Because the pebble analysis is a less technical method, it is naturally more reliable. However, by changing the person collecting samples with a hand grab and separating the measurement of length and width into two separate groups, the data becomes less reliable, as there is very little consistency. It would be far more reliable to use the same person to collect all samples. Also, by taking it in turns to measure pebbles shapes, there is again little consistency, so results will be less reliable. Getting each student to judge the shape on the powers round the scale and then taking an average would have improved the accuracy and therefore the reliability of the method. In conclusion, both techniques were riddled with potential inaccuracies and lack of reliability and could have improved with simple changes. However, due to the more technical requirements in measuring beach gradient, this was the least accurate method and therefore provided the least reliable results. If you want any more help with this, or would like to practice some 8 mark questions, feel free to attend Geography Revision every Monday or Thursday after school where you'll be supported by members of the Geography Department. We look forward to seeing you there. Remember, don't give the bare minimum, give the bare maximum.